First question says, calculate the coordinates of M. Now they've told us that this distance is the same as this distance. So what that means is that M is the midpoint. So to calculate M, it's very easy. We just use the midpoint formula, which is X1 plus X2 over two and Y1 plus Y2 over two. And I'm gonna apply that formula with QN. Uh, N. So I should have said here QN, so the midpoint of QN. And so the midpoint of QN is gonna be equal to four plus eight over two and minus eight plus zero over two. And if you had to go work that out, you're gonna get six and negative four. Six and negative four is the coordinates of M. Right, calculate the gradient of NS. Guys, I'm not gonna calculate the gradient of NS. Uh, it's a waste of time. Um, the answer that you should get will be two, okay? Uh, so let me just make sure, 16, 16, yeah. The answer is gonna be two because you guys know how to do this by now. So that's just an easy question. There's probably more difficult questions coming up. So the, so the, the coordinates there is six and minus four and the gradient of this line is two. Okay, right, let's move on. Show that the equation of the line LQ, show that the equation of the line LQ is given by that. Okay, for three marks, that looks a little bit better. Oh, okay, okay, this one's not too bad. So guys, they want the equation of the line LQ. Now, what you should identify is that, is that these lines over here are perpendicular. So remember that when two lines are perpendicular, uh, Josh, exactly. When two lines are perpendicular, you can multiply their gradients. So the gradient of OQ multiplied by the gradient of SN, for example, and you will always get minus one because they are perpendicular. So the gradient of OQ multiplied by the gradient of SN, which is two, should be minus one. And so the gradient of LQ is negative a half. Then I can say Y equals to negative a half X plus C. And then to find the value of C, I need to plug in any point on this line. And that point would be four and minus eight. So I'm just gonna rush through this now because this is very easy for you guys. And if you had to go calculate C, you should end up with C equals to negative six. And so the equation of this line is Y equals to negative a half X minus six. Then they say, determine the equation of a circle having a center at O and also passing through S. Determine the equation of a circle having a center at O and also passing through S. Okay, so that would be a circle that looks something like, um, Okay, let me do this one manually. It would do something like this. Okay, so that circle would be, and we know that a normal circle is x minus a plus y minus b squared, squared equals to r squared, but the center is the origin. So a and b are zero. So that's just gonna give us x squared plus y squared equals to r squared. Now this vertical distance over um, this vertical distance here could be the radius. And that vertical distance is 16. It's 16, right? So the radius of our circle is 16. So we could say x squared plus y squared is equal to 16 squared, which is 256. Okay, so x squared plus y squared equals 256. That is the equation of that circle. This question says, calculate the coordinates of T. Okay, so that's quite an easy one because check here. This line and this line are parallel. They have the same gradient. So we can say that the gradient of MR must be the same as the gradient of LQ because they are parallel. So that means that the gradient of um, MR must be equal to negative a half. Remember we calculate this gradient as negative a half. Then to find the value of C, you must plug any number, that is, any coordinate that is on that line. And so you could plug in six and minus four. So we would say Y is equal to MX plus C 
So y is equal to minus a half x plus c. And then you plug in 6 and negative 4. And then you're going to get minus 4 equals to minus 3 plus c. And so c would be equal to minus 1. And so that's going to give us the equation of um, mr, which is going to be y equals to negative a half x uh, minus 1. And now if you want to work out the coordinates of t, well, that's easy. That's just the y-intercept. So you would make x equal to 0 in that equation, and you're just going to get minus 1. So the coordinates of t will be 0 and minus 1. Okay, the next question says, determine the value of LS over RS. LS over RS. All right, so this is a bit of proportionality happening. So if I look in this triangle over here, then what we can see is that these two lines are parallel. So we could say something like, um, LS over RS. So you see what we're doing? We're saying LS over RS. That must be the same as the other side. So that would be the same as QS over the entire other side, which is SM. And here you can say prop theorem if you want, or you can say line parallel side of triangle. There's two different, uh, two different reasons that you must use, but you must mention which lines are parallel. So that's going to be QL is parallel to RM. Okay. So what this now means is that we are going to have to go calculate the distance of QS, and we're going to have to go calculate the distance of SM. Now, you guys know how to do that. So I'm just going to do it very quickly, OK? What you should find is that QS, if you use the distance formula, should give you a value of 4 square root 5. And then uh, the distance of SM, the distance of SM should give you 6 square root 5. And so if we say that LS over RS is equal to 4 square root 5 over SM, which is 6 square root 5, then you should get a final answer of 2 over 3. Last question for four marks. Calculate the area of PT, PTMQ, PTMQ. What we could do is this would work nicely. We can calculate the area of this triangle. right? And then we can just subtract the area of this one. That'll work nicely. So we take the area of, um, we take the area of the big pink one, and we subtract the area of the little green one. And then that will give us the area of the blue space. Okay. So to find the area of the pink one, what we can do, okay, so we don't need this anymore. What we would need to do is we'd need to calculate the distance of this part over here. Oh, whoa, that's really big. We'd calculate the distance of this part. And then we would also need the perpendicular height, which would be this part over here. So let's quickly go do those. Um, I'm gonna just rush through this now. Uh, so to calculate the to calculate the length of SM, the length of SM, you would get that as oh, I think we already did. We already did work that out as six square root five. Fantastic. And then we would need the length of MT. Now the length of MT should give you three square root five. And so the area of triangle STM is going to be a half base times height, which would be a half uh, the base length, which would be SM multiplied by the perpendicular height, which would be TM. And that's going to be a half. Now, SM is 6 square root 5. TM is 3 square root 5. 
and that should be yeah 45 45 is the area of the pink one okay so that's the pink one so what we can do next um, is we can go get the green triangle so the green one just has a little base which we can calculate. Now that base is going to be SQ, which we already worked out over here. So SQ is going to be four square root five. We would also need the height, the perpendicular height. Um, so to do that, we need the coordinates of P. To get the coordinates of P, you would use the equation of LQ, which was this one. And if you had to go work out the Y intercept, you should get minus six. So this coordinate here, is zero and minus six. So if you had to work out the distance of QP, you would get two square root five. And so now we can quickly go work out the area of triangle PQS. And that would be half the base, which is SQ multiplied by the height, which is PQ. And so that's going to be a half multiplied by four square root five and then PQ, which is two square root five. Um, so that should be 20. Okay, perfect. And so now if we want to get the area of P, T, M, Q, we can just say that it's going to be uh, 45 minus 20 and that's going to be 25.